Razer's been making some great hardware. Check out my review of the Razer Blade Stealth that I did this year and you'll know exactly what I mean. And a lot of eyebrows were raised when Razer recently acquired Nextbit and now we know why. It's because of this. It's called the Razer Phone and it's a phone geared towards gamers with outstanding speakers, 120Hz QHD display and it's built like a tank. Sounds really good, right? Well it is, but it's not perfect. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the Razer Phone. I got a lot of exciting things on the way to the studio, so don't forget to smash that subscribe button. The Razer phone comes in at $699, and I think that's a pretty good price considering you're getting some pretty high-end specs and some outstanding build quality. It's powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, has 8GB of RAM and 64GB of onboard storage, which is expandable via the micro SD card slot, which takes up to 256GB micro SD cards. I ordered my unit directly from Razer, but you can get it from Amazon. I will put my affiliate link below for more information and where you can get one. Now, packaging is very premium on this $700 high end smartphone. Opening the box, you're greeted by a message from the CEO, which is a pretty nice touch. Holding the unit for the first time, you realize how high-end and premium this really feels. It feels really dense, and it feels really good in the hands. You get a SIM ejection tool along with some documentation. And in typical Razer fashion, you get your Razer stickers. They also give you a 3.5 millimeter to USB-C adapter because you're going to need it as this does not have a headphone jack. You get your USB Type-C cable and your charging adapter which supports quick charging. My first thought is this is the anti-iPhone. It doesn't have any rounded edges. It's, everything is boxy, very squared off, very industrial looking, very monolithic looking and I like it. The Razer phone sports a 5.7 inch IGZO LCD IPS display. It has a resolution of 2560 by 1440. That's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and it has 515 pixels per inch. At 300 nits, this is not a very bright display and I wish it got brighter, but having said that, it's still a very sharp, excellent display. What makes this display so special is the fact that this is the only smartphone that I know that has 120 hertz refresh rate, making this excellent for gaming and scrolling through the OS. Swiping through the different screens is so buttery smooth, it feels excellent, and when you start getting used to that, it's hard to go to any other display that has less refresh rate. You can see the big difference. And besides that great 120Hz display, the other big selling feature are those speakers. They're the best in class in terms of what you'd get on a smartphone. They're in a league of their own. And unlike some other smartphone manufacturers, they decided to go with those bezels and make good use of them by putting those excellent speakers on there. Unlike some other smartphone makers that decide to give you a mono speaker and give you those small bezels, Razer said to hell with that, we're going to give you some of the best sounding speakers on the market and they delivered. Now it's very hard to capture just how good these speakers are on video, you have to hear them in person. But to give you an idea just how good they are, let's first listen to a sound clip from the iPhone 10 to be followed by the Razer phone and you be the judge. Let's see if you can see the big difference. Most people when they hear Razer think of the gaming peripherals and the gaming laptop giant. Well, they also make an ultra portable. And if you know my channel, you know I reviewed last year the Razer Blade Stealth. Well, I've got its updated version for 2017 and they seem to have made all the right improvements. Hey everyone, it's Andrew from AMD Tech, and this is my unboxing and review of the new Razer Blade Stealth. 
Most people, when they hear Razer, think of the gaming peripherals and the gaming laptop giant. Well, they also make an ultra portable. And if you know my channel, you know I reviewed last year the Razer Blade Stealth. Well, I've got its updated version for 2017, and they seem to have made all the right improvements. Hey everyone, it's Andrew from AMD Tech, and this is my unboxing and review of the new Razer Blade Stealth. That 120 hertz display and those speakers certainly enhance your gaming experience, and that's by design. Now there's a fingerprint sensor located on the side of the device and I thought the placement was pretty good although it was a little bit low for my taste it would have been better a little bit higher up but nonetheless it worked really well registering my finger pretty much every time I used it. The setup of the fingerprint sensor was really easy, worked well and I had no trouble registering multiple fingers so really good job in implementation of that fingerprint sensor. Now when it comes to the cameras, that's where things are not so great. It starts to fall apart in some sense. Now you do get dual 12 megapixel cameras on the back. And to be honest, they're okay at best, if not below average. And that's a little bit disappointing in the sense that you are getting a premium smartphone. You were hoping to get a premium camera, but that's not the focus of this device. Gaming is the focus. Let's keep that in mind. But having said that, you be the judge, take a look at some of these images, they're certainly passable, and when you need to take a photo or even a video, it can get the job done. It just won't be on the level of an iPhone 10 or a Pixel 2 XL, you get my drift. Now you can do 4K 30 frames per second video, it was okay, I wasn't that impressed with it. Certainly not as bad as some of the other reviewers are making it out to be, but certainly not on the par or on level with those higher end smartphones that we mentioned earlier. There's an 8 megapixel front facing camera that does 1080p video. Let's see it in action. So this is the front facing webcam on the Razer phone and it's okay. It's a 1080p front facing webcam. It's uh, not the greatest. Look, this camera on the front and even on the back, it's not the greatest camera. It's not a flagship level camera, but this is a gaming phone and I think that's the focus. So let's keep that in mind. But having said that, this certainly can get the job done. It's not as bad as everybody's saying it is, but it's certainly not great. It runs Android 7.1.1 Nougat with the hope that Android Oreo will be coming to this device. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Now they did something very smart. Instead of putting their own custom launcher or custom skin on this, they decided to put Nova Launcher Prime on this and it really is excellent. One of my favorite custom launchers that you can install on any other device. But the fact that this comes right out of the box with Nova Prime is fantastic. And just like other flagship phones, the Snapdragon 835 that's in this, that's powering this device did really well by judging by these scores. Obviously gaming focus, you'll need that processing power and obviously the scores are a result of that. Now with that focus on gaming, it did really well on the Intuitu benchmarks is indicative of a really good high-end flagship phone and this certainly was no exception. That 8 gigabytes of RAM certainly aids in performance. This was a really speedy snappy phone to say the least the razor phone does have a 4000 milliamp hour battery which is pretty big and they will need it because that 120 hertz display is power hungry and as a result you will see not the greatest battery life i've ever seen but certainly very good here's some of the results it did about seven and a half hours web browsing and just under seven hours in video playback that's not bad considering i was running the screen at 120 hertz which is power hungry. Now the supplied charger is Quick Charge 4 Plus and it will charge the device 0 to 70% in about 30 minutes, which was pretty good. This is a GSM phone, so if you're in the United States, you cannot use it with Sprint or Verizon, but you can use it with AT&T, T-Mobile, and I was able to use it with my Project Fi SIM without any issues connecting to LTE without any problems. 
So to bring it all home, can I recommend the Razer phone? Is it worth your hard earned money? And the answer is yes, especially if you like to game on your phone. There is no better choice out there right now. That 120 refresh rate on that QHD display is outstanding. And so are those outstanding speakers. They are simply in a league of their own. And that rock solid construction really is excellent. Now, of course, I did wish that the display was brighter. So that is a negative in one sense. And I'm not happy that there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, although I think they should have had it. And there is no form of waterproofing on this. There is no IP67 rating, so you can forget about that. And of course, that subpar cameras really didn't blow me away, although they're not as bad as everyone made them out to be. But cameras are not the focus of this phone. It's gaming, and there's no better option out there right now. And that's why I'm gonna give this an 88%, making the Razer phone worth your money. So what do you think about the Razer phone? I think it's an excellent phone. I think it's a great first try from Razer. We know they bought Nextbit, and now you know where the resources went. Now, I love the design. It's very monolithic. It looks very industrial, and it has the same materials as the Razer Blade Stealth that I recently reviewed, and it's really good. It's very solid, and it looks like it's, it's going to take a drop, and it will be able to handle it. It's built like a tank. Now, as far as those speakers are concerned, ladies and gentlemen, best in class, without a doubt, best sounding speakers on any device or any smartphone, I should say, right now. There is no, there's no comparison. They're, they're in another league of its own. Excellent job in terms of the speakers and the display. At 120 hertz, what a difference in terms of scrolling, how smooth it is, how fluid it is. And once you start, once you look at 120 hertz and, and experience it, it's very hard to go back to a display with less refresh rate. I and mean, then it's really great for gaming. This phone is really an excellent gaming phone, an excellent multimedia phone. Now the caveats here is there's no headphone jack, which is kind of a surprise. Not, the, not in the sense that most manufacturers, as we know, are not putting them in. But look, they had the room there, and this is a multimedia powerhouse, and it has some really good speakers. Why not put the headphone jack? I, I think they missed out on that one, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I use Bluetooth headphones, but for those that like the wired ones, they're going to miss out on that. But those speakers, once again, I can't stress it enough, are so good that you don't even want to use headphones. It's that good, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm curious to know what you think about the Razer phone. Leave a comment in the comment section below. At $700, I think it's a good price for what you're getting. Excellent build, great sounding speakers, phenomenal speakers. Excellent display, although I wish it could have been brighter. It was a little bit dim for my taste, but certainly not a deal breaker. That 120 refresh rate is the best part of this phone. Now, the camera's not good. We all know that. This is not, and I don't think this is gonna be a deal breaker for those who are looking for a gaming phone they're probably not looking for the high-end phone anyway. It can take decent shots, as you saw, a decent video. It's certainly not very good, but it can get the job done. Now, if you're looking for a phone that has flagship camera level performance, this is not the one. There are so much better ones out there, such as the Pixel X2, the iPhone 10. you get my drift. But if you want a gaming phone with some sound that, sound that is phenomenal, excellent display in terms of 120 refresh rate, this is your ticket. I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of the Razer phone in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.